Okay, you're fine. You're on 34th Street. Okay, any train here will take you to 34th Street. We were then threatened a second time with arrest for filming on the New York subway. And a woman who was separate from our group had her film camera taken, smashed, and the film destroyed. The footage you're about to see was shot clandestinely as the police took action against us. Yeah, I got to talk to her because she took a picture. Is this what I'm asking you for? I can't get arrested. I can't. Let's not shed a tear over this now. Why are we playing games? John, you're a witness to what just happened. What do we do? We took a picture of a homeless person, felt sorry for her and gave her some money. And then we were promptly almost arrested by Port Authority police in a subway. The police had been arresting reporters across the city, and a judge had ordered them to stop, but that just seemed to encourage them. Take him out. How about we go to whoever gave those to you and get them revoked? I just ask you to do me a favor and not table over it's here. It's my fault, sir. I'm his boss. I'm no, no, no. Listen, first of all, I'm talking. I don't need you to interrupt me while I'm talking. Yes, all right? Okay. And I just got finished telling him that I don't want him taping over here. Nicely to go over to the island. Were you here when I said that? No, I was So why are you interrupting me now? I'm saying it's my fault. I'm just... How is it your fault if you're not here? All right? How about we just leave? We'll just that would be a great idea. Okay. Why don't you leave? Okay. Oh, yeah. I've almost been arrested three times every day anywhere in the city of city videotaping anything. It is an absolute nightmare. Hey guys, get your cameras on. Okay, let me have my let me get well number one. Hey, we're allowed to be here. Folks, this is martial law. Sir, how many police were in New York? Forty thousand. That's a huge army. It is. <laughs> I think we need more police. There's not enough police. Maybe we need 100 million police. <laughs> How about 50 cops for every New Yorker? How's that sound? Oh, uh, no, it's a little bit too outrageous. <laughs> A few months ago, they had a new fake terror alert, later they had to admit it was fake, claiming that a couple of Muslim guys were down here trying to take photos and video of all of this. They wanted to attack it. And they said it was a brand new threat. But it turned out that it was over four years old. And then when we got here to New York for the convention, uh, they busted two guys who supposedly were going to go after the subway. And then in that case, too, it turned out that that was fake, that that wasn't real. But all of these are used to scare the population into submission and as a pretext to up the police state and the despotism. Straight out of the running man, right here in New York, we have police state surveillance blimps that are sponsored by Fuji Film. This is only the beginning. In the future, every major city will have a high-altitude blimp tethered to a cable with ground-penetrating radar that looks right through your walls and gives the government a black-and-white image of the inside of your home. This entire war on terror is truly a pretext to launch a military-industrial complex takeover of the entire society. Everything is now going to shift into prisons and surveillance and security. We're going out of the free market economy into the fascist economy. The elite has used socialism to consolidate the people's wealth. Now that it's under their control, they're going to phase out all of the programs for the population, and it's all going to corporate welfare. This is the new America. Sound weapons. Police in black ski masks with automatic machine guns. And yes, helicopters swarming around surveillance blimps right here in New York City. And only in the new corporate fascist America would we have a blimp for police state purposes uh, that is sponsored by a major company. And we found out that Fuji gave free bikes to all the police. And guess why? They sold the U.S. government, a bunch of different city governments, or trying to sell other city governments, these high-tech imaging systems, these face scanning systems to recognize who we are. So our face becomes a national ID card, and Fuji is on the cutting edge of that. In the past, football teams had sponsors or baseball teams. Then it was named stadiums after phone companies, Southwestern Bell, Nextel. Now we have the Fuji sponsored NYPD blimp. Follow the blimp. The blimp just flew over. Yeah, Follow that blimp. Don't lose it.
They're using that blimp for surveillance. We always know where the protests are at. There it is, sir. Follow that blimp. No, Louis, what do you guys think of the new security blimp? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I want to know how you get qualified to uh, drive the blimp. Uh, it says look. Fuji and NYPD. Yes, it does. So I want to go to blimp school because I want to I want to fly the blimp. So is Fuji now with the police department or are you guys renting it? I think we're renting it. You know? Renting a balloon? Yeah. Believe it or not, right? <laughs> I heard a story that the police, in, 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 uh, some of their helmets have cameras. That I never heard. <laughs> I saw it on Fox. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. What about the big sound wave guns? Where are those? I haven't. That I know nothing about. Did you hear about those? No, I didn't. Did you hear about how they got the sound? I can't, I can't comment on anything like that. Well, in the newspaper. I can't comment. I'm not allowed to comment on anything like that. On the, what are they called? The frequency? I don't know what they're called. But you can't comment on it? No. You're not, you can neither confirm nor deny? <laughs> So it's going to be between 14th and 23rd Street, between 5th and 8th Avenue. It's going to be on 3 Street. We're trying to find out how many of these protesters actually know what they're talking about and know what real issues are. So we're going to now go down the road and get in front of the demonstration that's massing right now. Then it's going to march down towards Madison Square Garden. We'll be there covering it when they come marching in. Sir, what do you think about the whole official 9-11 story? Our well, government appears to be uh, to have, have had uh, a lot of cooperation with the, with the, the forces that, that caused it to happen. But I'm here to tell the world that Bush is wrong. He's a liar. He's evil. He's consolidated power in a way that is it's bad. Now, as most of you know, we're not left-wing or right-wing. We're into freedom, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. And whether it was Bill Clinton or George Bush, those freedoms are being destroyed. Under Bush, it's all accelerated. I think if they were going to have a convention, they could have picked somewhere better than New York. And it seems like Bush is trying to bind himself to the 9-11 tragedy. Uh, do you have any comments on that? I was there, and anybody that's going to try and put themselves above the people that actually help pull those people out is not worth my worth my comment, man. I was there. How's the convention going? The convention's going good, no problems. Everything's good. I heard some anarchists though were burning a dragon or a paper dragon. Not over here. Everything's quiet, you know. Everything's so far so good. What's the blimp doing? Just keeping an eye on things, I guess. I love being a puppet for the New World Order. They will be my slaves. I am the mini-me of Lord Bush. Oh, it feels so good. Ah, I'm enslaving them and destroying the Bill of Rights. Oh, it's so powerful. I will soon rule everything. Oh, yes. We've been talking to a lot of the protesters, and most of them say Bush bad, Kerry good. The problem is Bush and Kerry are cousins. Kerry's for the war. And one of the few signs that we've seen that is exposing that both of them work for the same people and are part of a false choice is this communist revolution sign. But you know, I go back to 1958 when Eisenhower called Fidel Castro the Abraham Lincoln of Latin America. And so the problem is, is that it was actually the big central banks at the turn of the last century that created communism as a way to try to con the serfs back into serfdom. So again, another false choice is what we have here. Bush carry equals more war. I agree. They're corporate fascists. It's all true. But then the corporate fascists have funded this as their counter-revolution control valve. This is the true complexity that we're facing. And until we figure that out, we're going to lose all our freedoms, and they're going to keep winning. How you doing, ma'am? Hey, I, I like the top part of your sign. I agree they're all controlled. Are you a communist? Go away. But it says communist revolution. I really Why don't, don't want you to stop to bothering this lady. What are you What are you worried about? What am I? I'm not. I'm not. You're, what did you say? I didn't hear you. How can you say that? 
How can I say what? Very nasty what you just said. Did you hear what he just said? Did you hear what this guy just said? He said something terribly nasty. That, that stuff doesn't work. You know, I don't know. This, this is in the 60s. Totally Look, he's trying to agitate. This is not going to happen. This doesn't work. This is not the 60s. Don't happen anymore. No, no, We're no. living in. The what I'm saying is. Anymore. What I'm saying is. I'm saying. Communism. Communism. You work for the U.S. government, don't you? This guy said over here. This guy's nasty. Boy, he is nasty. You are nasty. nasty. I said that the communists so, work for the big banks. Oh, the big banks. This, man is, this man is from the big banks. He's yeah. from Chase Manhattan. See this? He isn't interested in information. Manhattan. He's actually he's interested in putting out this info. Chase Manhattan and Citibank. Yeah. And Citibank and Chase Manhattan are part of capitalism. You see, ladies and gentlemen, oh, no, this is the communist for you. It's all it's this info, all capital. propaganda. It's all part of capitalism. It's all part of capitalism, isn't it? Capitalism. You're a capitalist. You're a capitalist. You're a capitalist. The U.S. government missed they put Mao in. Capitalist. U.S. government missed they put Mao in. Capitalist. You're a capitalist, are you? How much money do you have on you? You're a capitalist. Free markets? What does that mean? You're capitalist but masters. What does a free market mean? What's a free market? How long have you been a person? How long have you been a jerk? Right. How long have you been a jerk? 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 Do what, mate? Grow up. You should, asshole. Grow up. No, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find out. I agree with the top. I'm trying to find anything. I'm trying to disrupt this jerk. Why don't you grow up and get out of here, please? Bush Carey equals more war. I agree Thank with that. Thank you. Good. But That's what I'm saying is, is that the communists were actually, at the beginning, funded by the same people. They, it, it's all consolidation. That's all I'm saying. Good. Thank you. He doesn't care about facts. It's all just this. Good. Info. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Thanks. So... You don't care that Stalin killed 50 million people. So, yeah. So go, so go ahead. So what else? So you don't care. So who are you? Kill. How many people did you kill? No one. But your ideas killed millions and millions and millions. Capitalism. You're a capitalist. You're a pro-capitalist. That's the one, right? She wishes we were dead right there. This is the one? She's the one walking around saying she wishes we were dead. Replay it for yourself. She clearly says that too bad Stalin didn't kill us. So we see these communists down here who say Bush, Kerry, both equal war. And we go, yeah, we agree with you. But why are you for communism? Because communism actually, as Professor Carol Quigley at Georgetown, Bill Clinton's mentor said, was a creation of the big banks to centralize governments and con the people into a movement for the population that was really for the establishment. And they began to threaten to want to kill us. Some of it we got on tape, some of it we didn't. Hey guys, how's it going? Tell us what you think about this. We're members of the Revolutionary Communist Youth Brigade. Tell us what you believe in. man, if you want to talk to us, you got to talk to us. you got to talk to Stalin, in other words. If you want to connect an interview, we can hook you up with our spokesperson. You're not allowed to, to talk yourself? Hey, if you want an interview, you should talk to the spokesperson. Well, have fun. So you, so your leaders don't let you talk yourselves? They, they've never been to the Soviet Union, Poland, or anywhere in the Eastern Bloc. Look at them. They're like 18 and 20. Come on. And you got these old... Why don't you talk to some mainstream Americans? Okay. Okay. We know where you're coming from. You're looking, you're looking to, uh, to make people in Lima... No, sir. We're not mainstream media. We're actually trying to just make a documentary about all the different views that are at the convention. And everybody's been real nice to us, but communists, they always flip out when we try to talk to them. So now it is becoming an issue with them because they're so ridiculous. Documentary on all views? You're very biased. Probably work for Fox. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably work for Fox. That's right. Okay, get lost. We only knew how ridiculous that was. I've exposed George Bush for carrying out 9-11. I've exposed Bill Clinton. They all work for the globalists. And the globalists funded you little people. You guys need to wake up. Sir, a lot of New Yorkers have said in the poll show 80% don't want Bush to have the convention here, but they're doing it. And some people say that he's being opportunistic, uh, trying to associate himself with 9-11. Oh, I, I, I disagree entirely. I think this is the perfect venue for Bush to, and the RNC to hold this event. I mean, New York City is a, a world capital place. 
a uh, big focus um, in New York uh, from the rest of America, and I think it's a perfect venue irrespective of your party leanings. Have you seen any of the protesters while you've been in town, and what do you think of them if you have? Well, we've seen a few of them. Uh, mostly, of course, they're kept away from the delegates. But to me, they're not New Yorkers. There's people that have come in and are trying to make New Yorkers look bad. There are a bunch of young kids. I'm wondering how many of those that are out there protesting, one, know what they're voting about, what they're protesting about, and two, are they going to even vote when it comes to the, the line? A lot of them are good people and, and have some legitimate issues. And I've seen people who aren't doing anything, whole streets just scooped up and arrested. And then they brought them out to the dock out there in an old condemned building with asbestos, it's admitted, and have 2,000 of them in there, no air conditioning and cages inside a, a kind of a Guantanamo camp. Well, you know, I don't know of any, any of those issues. In fact, um, if you're going to protest and you know there's a lot of security, this is just not the way to do it. Protest in another venue other than this. You know, I, I firmly believe in the right to protest, but this is just not a good place to do it. We've, we've had too much problems in this city to bring more problems to this city. September 11th uh, for a reason to sell as a selling point. This nation was scared to death when those towers went down. The term for it is called waving the bloody shirt. I thought it was manipulated. Get people a feeling people's emotions rather than their reason. Well, I think they took a, advantage of a bad situation. So why are you out here? Uh, I'm from California and helping your documentary. We're here to protest the protesters. We're here to tell them they're just a bunch of uh, leftist ingrates who are taking advantage of living in America. America is free because people have bled for this country. And uh, we want a strong America, much like we want a strong police department, or we're going to have thugs ruling the streets. We want a strong police, which keeps it safe. We want a strong military, which keeps a good country. Yeah, the same Bible, the same Bible that the president is going to put his hand on that says no same-sex marriage. What are you doing hanging around a bunch of right-wing Christians? What, what, what are you guys doing hanging around us? This isn't Berkeley, pal. This isn't Berkeley, buddy. You can't spell Berkeley. How can they leave the borders wide open but then take our liberties? I'm all for closing the borders. Are you kidding? I'm from California. Our hospitals are costing us $80 for an aspirin because illegal aliens are going into our, our, our hospitals. I don't understand what the word is. Well, why hasn't Bush done something? Well, I, I would like to see him do a lot more. A lot more with stopping those people from coming over our borders. I don't know what the word illegal and illegal alien means if we don't stop them. America is a great country. We annihilate our enemies. Would you please get that dog out of here? There are homosexuals here in New York. They're liable to think that's a gerbil on steroids. Let's be more sensitive. Where's PETA when you really need him? If those people are going to be in heaven back there, if those people are the ones who the ones who have armaments on their poster and everything, if they're going to be in heaven, I'm ready to go to hell. And this, this New York is a good example, folks, of what you're going to get in your city, this complete control grid, this locked down city where everything is commercialized, whereas you did that bit on your show where they know what you're going to eat before you're going to eat it. You hear about those guys, thought criminals, they're going to blow up something, they have no weapons. Well, and this is the thing, Alex, a lot of these people down here, they want democracy, and it's amazing how they've been conditioned to ask for their own enslavement. They, 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 it's all they know. They don't understand this is a republic. Look at all of this. I mean, you'd think these people were very informed. Explain the difference between a republic and democracy. Well, I mean, basically, the democracy is mob rule. And what these people don't understand is that a 51%, whether they're corporate, whether they're Bushites, whether they're Mexicans, decide their fate, then so be it. That's what they're asking for. We're in New York, ladies and gentlemen, streets are jammed. My friend just called me, and he's right there with Michael Moore right now. I mean, I want once ten minutes. I want to just say, tell me, and I'll you know I'll put it in. Okay, cool. All right, cool. That's awesome. Thanks. Michael Moore is inside there. Now we're going to answer a question: Did Michael Moore expose the truth about 9/11, or did he whitewash it? You know, George Bush has said that anybody that has any connections to Al Qaeda, I mean Al Qaeda 
should be arrested. Well, no one has greater connections to the Saudis and the House of bin Laden than the Bushes. They've been in business together for decades. George Bush actually started his first oil company way back in 1976 with a member of the bin Laden family and with their funds. The Bushes used them to go after the Soviets back in the 1980s. And bin Laden, according to a Senate report, was actually used to attack the Serbs back in the late 1990s. So when the Serbs fought back, they could say, oh, look, see, they're a bunch of terrorists. We've got to go in and take out the Serbs. My friends, the government had complete and total prior knowledge of the horrible events that happened here. And at the bare minimum, they allowed this tragedy to take place as a pretext to scare the population into total abject fear and then submission. In his film Fahrenheit 9-11, Michael Moore doesn't even talk about things that MSNBC and the Associated Press have reported on. That Osama bin Laden's code name in the CIA was Tim Osman. That he was a CIA asset trained in the 1970s and used against the Russians in the 1980s in Afghanistan. Then of course he helped against the Serbs in the late 1990s. Over and over again, Osama bin Laden has been used as a tool of the U.S. government and its interests. Anytime they need to create a crisis anywhere on the planet, bin Laden comes to their rescue as the fire starter they need to create the crisis so they can offer their solution. Or why didn't he talk about the huge 9-11 truth movement that sprung up right after 9-11, made up of hundreds of the victims' families of September 11th, alleging government involvement in the attacks? Why didn't the film talk about the official U.S. government plan to carry out terror attacks in America and blame it on foreign enemies? Operation Northwoods. It even called for hijacking jets by remote control and crashing them, bombing D.C., committing sniper attacks. No, Michael Moore didn't discuss this. Something ABC News and the Baltimore Sun were willing to do, Michael Moore wouldn't get near. Or did you know that it's admitted fact that public officials, federal, state, and local across the land were called by the White House in the days before 9-11 and told not to fly to New York on the day of September 11th? Mayor Willie Brown of San Francisco was called by the White House and told don't fly to New York on the morning of September 11th. He was called September 10th. Why didn't Moore talk about this? John Ashcroft, the Attorney General, just a few weeks before September 11th, stopped flying commercial citing a hijacker risk. Most shocking of all, the Joint Chiefs of Staff had a scheduled meeting in New York City on September 11th. But the day before, because of a quote warning, they canceled their trip to New York City. They even told MSNBC this, but it's still somewhat of a public secret and Michael Moore isn't talking about it. Author Salman Rushdie was warned by the FAA not to fly to New York on the morning of September 11th as well. It was reported by the Times of London. We have the San Francisco Chronicle, MSNBC, the Associated Press reporting all of this. But still, the average American has been kept in the dark because it's never made the nightly news and it's certainly never been talked about by Michael Moore. And there was no mention of the fact that NORAD stood down for the first time in its 50-year history. To their credit, something that Michael Moore and the mainstream media did get right was that in the three days after September 11, 2001, over 160 members of Osama bin Laden's family were flown out of the country to Saudi Arabia. This at a time when all commercial and private air traffic was grounded by the Pentagon. But that wasn't the only airlift. Seymour Hersh first broke the story at the New Yorker magazine about the airlift of evil. It was then picked up by major publications, but, well, forgotten into the memory hole. At the end of the three-week-long Afghan war in Afghanistan, 8,000 Taliban and Al-Qaeda leaders were loaded on U.S. government C-130s and flown out to Pakistan to safety. It had been their job to stir up the phony crisis in Afghanistan and then give George W. the fake victory. You see, it was a staged war. And this is one of the other big smoking guns of 9-11 government involvement that we're all supposed to forget about. Oh, the government admits they flew them out to safety, but Fox News said it was an accident. Yes, 8,000 Taliban and Al-Qaeda cream the leaders being flown out to safety. And top generals were told to release Taliban generals. They were told, let them go. 
and some of the generals got angry and went public. The FBI has gone public, as well as the CIA. They've even leaked the orders, like W199I, where George Bush ordered them to back off Osama bin Laden and his family. In fact, they even fired some agents that refused to follow their orders. There were red flags everywhere. Everyone knew that the attack was coming. That's why so many public officials didn't go to New York. But months before, there was the Bush administration frustrating the investigations, ordering the agents off the cases, ensuring that the attacks would go forward. Then there were the media reports by respected institutions backed up by hospital officials at the American hospital in Dubai, Pakistan, of Osama bin Laden meeting with the CIA Middle East section chief for 10 days in July of 2001, months before September 11. The question is, what was the CIA doing meeting with Osama bin Laden? Getting their story straight? Well, look, two and a half years ago, I said that Bush was in business with the Bin Ladens. Now, FBI agents have gone on C-SPAN and said it. Okay? I mean, it was in the Miami newspapers that they were flying the Bin Ladens out. And I'd read it on my radio show, and people call it a conspiracy. It was in the Miami newspapers two days after 9-11. They got photos of them flying the Bin Ladens out of the country when you and I were not allowed to fly. Bush and his family got their first money for Bush's... Arbusto Oil down in Texas from the Bin Laden family. FBI agent Robert Wright at the National Press Club went up there and said, I've been threatened with arrest. If I tell you what I know, here's a letter from the Justice Department. All I can tell you is the Bushes vacation with the Bin Ladens. How many of you know that the supposed hijackers, it turned out seven of them are still alive? That's the BBC. So there we were in New York just wanting to talk to Michael Moore and ask him, why didn't you talk about these really important issues, these central issues? And in between his bodyguards uh, coming over and shoving on us and telling us not to videotape him through the window, we began to realize that Michael Moore really does George Bush a favor. In his film, he acts like Bush is just some idiot who accidentally allowed 9-11 to happen because he was on too many vacations out fishing too much. Oh, no, that wasn't the reality. The reality is Bush and his corporate interests stood to gain from 9-11. And Michael Moore is covering up those facts. And you, don't, you don't want to let him eat? And once he eats, you can take his picture? Do you like your phone ringing when you're eating dinner? Oh, I'm not calling it. In reality, Mr. Moore had just completed his photo op for just a few minutes marching at the head of the parade with other genuine establishment libs like Jesse Jackson. Then he ducked into the taco bar, had the general public thrown out, and began, well, gobbling. And I wonder what he was thinking while he was eating. Man, are they going to catch on to me? As the hours went by, are they going to find out that I'm really a fake and a corporate shill that flies around in a corporate jet? All those years I chased the corporate bigwigs around and was thrown out of office buildings and stood outside restaurants. And now I've become what I always said I hated. Or maybe I was always what I claimed I hated. Yes, Mr. Moore, we have nothing against you. But you made a film where you claim that you exposed George Bush. You gave him aid and comfort. You covered up the reality of premeditated involvement in 9-11 and played into that popular little folky image of Bush the idiot elf. Bush is a puppet for a hardcore global crime syndicate setting up a world government and turning America into a high-tech police state. But I guess though it won't matter to people like you. You'll have a fake war to fight while all the time you're truly covering up the real political paradigm. Big pit paper in all the Norwegian business there. Did he already sneak out? He snuck. Out that way? He's gone. How many bodyguards is Michael Moore have? No, okay. Hey Michael, why don't you talk about NORAD standing down? Why don't you talk about NORAD standing down, Michael? Why not the really hardcore 9 11 issues? Michael Moore and the controlled opposition like him may be afraid to even scratch the surface of 9 11. 
but we're not. We're going to go to the rock bottom of this horrible event and expose who truly perpetrated it. Because the future of America and free humanity hangs in the balance. My name is Greg Pallast. Uh, I report for BBC Television. I was a writer for the Guardian newspapers, the main paper of Europe. The way they're covering protests here, let's see, there was a picture in the New York Times of a scantily clad woman uh, who was listed as a young communist poet. Let, and let's see, there was a, um, a AIDS protester, uh, you know, who looks scary and spooky and is about to infect the rest of America, shown. But you know, you don't have the, what we're literally hundreds of thousands of average people just saying, you know, we're fed up and, and we dissent and we don't like what's going on. Why don't you listen to us? That's what people are saying. Listen to us. We have a very interesting summer camp here in New York. 2,000 people locked up in a condemned building out on the pier. Uh, while the police say they've arrested 300, there are 2,000 being detained. What we see in Baghdad becomes in New York this week, Baghdad light. So instead of heavy, tortured shackles, you have plastic handcuffs, but it still has the same purpose keep the population in line. This is not the United States of America that we pledged allegiance to as little kids. You know, we were very proud of uh, the First Amendment and uh, you could dissent in the USA. And now suddenly dissent uh, is becoming, uh, they're labeling dissent as unpatriotic. We're in New York City, right here on the Hudson River. And this condemned former bus station where they stored the buses is being used to hold over 2,000 protesters. And they admit that they randomly set up fences and scoop up whole crowds of people and then take them here. And for over three days, they've not let people talk to lawyers, call out, talk to their families. Some have been released. Some have gone to the hospital with rashes over their entire bodies. This building is condemned. The city admits it. The Bus Union wouldn't allow them to use it years ago, so they turned it into an emergency police facility. It's full of asbestos, chemicals, oils from decades and decades and decades in this 70-year-old building. And the average stay for someone scooped up in there is over 24 hours. The city even admits that. Many of the nearly 2,000 protesters arrested over the past few days have been taken to an old bus depot on Manhattan's west side. But now the use of Pier 57 as a temporary holding facility is stirring up some controversy of its own. Protests are being held there to spotlight conditions. Some of those being detained say they're getting sick. There are reports of cramped conditions, rashes, chemical burns, and difficulty breathing. We should call this facility what it is, and it's a concentration camp. It's the Pier 57 concentration camp. The mayor has, has the nerve, and the police commissioner has the nerve to allow this to happen, to actually stick people in a in an a oil-filled garage with asbestos. The, the orange nets are about four feet high. They're, uh, they're used in construction to wrap construction sites so people can't get in or out. And the police just uh, bring them around you and you can't escape. I've been promoting that idea that, that we're heading in the, for a fascist dictatorship here. And obviously people are beginning to go, you know, you know I've, I'm beginning to think you were right. And uh, I think tomorrow we got to get everybody out there at ground zero between 1 and 6 p.m. to try to get the truth brought out to urge Elliot Spitzer to reopen this case. Now you're going to learn the truth about 9-11 that others dare not tell you. We're here at Ground Zero and a big protest is gathering and preparing to march across town. And behind us you can see the militarized police are massing for a response if there's any type of problems that develop. This is a hallmark of a society in decline where you have peaceful protesters showing up at Ground Zero calling for peace. And uh, you have police officers not with just non-lethal weapons but with fully automatic rifles. You see the founding fathers, they stood up, they were 4% at the beginning, and they said no to the Redcoats and no to the establishment. And Mark Twain said, in the beginning, a patriot is a scarce man. He's hated and feared. But in time, when his cause succeeds, the timid join him, because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. And we're looking for patriots that know what the Bill of Rights and Constitution says, and that can see all of this and know that it's a fraud. Get that guy. He's trying to take pictures of me. Get him. Hey, get him. Going to make you a star. Better hold it up there all day. Go ahead, buddy. Have a nice day. Huh? Have a nice day. No, no, seriously. I have a job to do. You're going to do my job. 
then we're going to be in problems. Hey, okay? really, so you shouldn't touch me. You need to identify yourself. You know in the state of New York that's assault, what you just did. And I'm asking you a question, sir. Why are you harassed? Who do you work for? You work for City of New York just to document people? Huh? Well, you, well, you need to tell us. I mean, you know, this is a free country. Alex? Excuse me. Excuse me. I mean, this is disgusting. Get some more of this guy. Well, there's your badge. Can we have your badge number, please? Nope. Who's your boss? Anyone Sir, can you tell me this is this guy's badge number? Secret police just covers his badge up. Secret police in America out photographing people. That's the shot. That's the shot right there. Get it, get it. There he is. Get it. Infowars.com. See yourself. You're going to look good. Everywhere we traveled in New York, secret police videotaped and took photographs of us. But it wasn't just our crew. It was the mainstream media and the general public at large that were being photographed. But the worst area of all was Ground Zero, where the police took photographs of protesters and attempted to intimidate them as well. The police photographing the citizens is bad enough, but across the country we've caught the military photographing the public, as well as working with the police at football and baseball games, searching people's goods. Why, in Alabama, the Alabama Defense Force comes out, forms cordons around whole cities during different festivals, and searches every man, woman, and child, training them how to live in a high-tech police state. And now our police themselves are beginning to turn into the military. And guess what the military does? They fight an enemy. They are set up to kill people and break things.